Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm here with my wife over there with our new camera doing Hello. Ooh, <laughs> close up shots. This is just a video or maybe an excuse to get out my Super Nintendo games that I've been collecting over the last. Ooh, it's an excuse for sure. <laughs> it's an excuse for sure. Um, this will be, well, it'll be three part video for us, but this whole video will be one part. It's just there's too much and it's just too long to do it in one big chunk. So if there's any weird like shirt changes or <laughs> haircuts or anything, that's why. It'll be several days for us and just, you know, the blink of an eye for you guys. Blink of an eye. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I'm just going to pull out random ones, maybe I'll mention a thing or two about them if I've got anything to say about them. Um, and yeah, so, first off is the wonderful Earthbound. One of those cult classics that no one wanted back in the day. Discounted, cleared out, and yet here we are. Very expensive these days. Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's an RPG on the Super Nintendo, released really, really late in the life cycle. Um, the cool thing about this one is, it comes with, well, a player's guy, which is cool, but I think we've still got the little scratch and sniff stickers. Let's see. Oh no, not scratch and sniff. Oh, that smells like dirt still. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so they still actually smell, which is quite amazing after like 20 years or something. So, let's just put that one over there. Now, here's one of my favourite games in the collection. It's Super Metroid and The Legend of Zelda. A link to the past. Here we go. So this is actually a really rare um, version of these two games. Um, it was just, it's basically a double box of both Zelda and Metroid. Um, and Zelda, uh, Metroid, or which one is it? Zelda is literally just shoved in there. It's just a regular box copy and then the regular big box of the, the Metroid with the guide. So, um, I paid not much for it, 15 years ago, I think I paid about 60 quid. I think, it's, I, think I saw one the other day sell for ooh, over a thousand. Not that we have quid here in it's Australia. It's Australian, <laughs> but you know, I brought it from the UK many years ago. The next on the list is Mario Paint. Pretty much one of the only games that used the mouse. Um, there was a few others, I think Japanese only and a couple of other odds and ends, but um, I remember playing this back in the day. The best thing was the fly swatter game, obviously. I remember watching, was it amazing? The kids game show here. And they always played like Super Nintendo games on it to try and win prizes and that was one of the games. And yeah, it comes with a mouse and like a mouse pad. So really cool. Also, if Nathan keeps looking at me, it's because this is the direction I'm in, but I have nothing to add because I didn't have a Super Nintendo. No, uh, she had a... Uh, Weird Sega computer, Atari, and then a Nintendo 64. Yes. Now, next one, The Lost Vikings. Another classic game um, by Blizzard. Obviously, the same people made World of Warcraft, Warcraft, and all the other wonderful games. Um, it's a pretty cool puzzle game, to be honest. Um, I actually remember playing on PC, mainly, rather than Super Nintendo. So there's that. Just scratch my eye. Now, that's riveting viewing. <laughs> of course. Now, I could never pronounce this game. It's one. It's a. It's a Donald Duck game. Donald Duck in um, Mau... Maui. Maui Mallard. That's it. Um, it's another quite a late Super Nintendo release. Um, I didn't play much of it back in the day. Um, I will say that it's got excellent animation. Um, it's really smooth and it's actually really excellent. It's a pity it doesn't have more sort of notoriety, which is a bummer. What should I pick now? Hmm. Choices. <laughs> oh, Mega Man X3. But it's not just any regular Mega Man X3. It's the, I believe it's the Hong Kong, oh no, sorry, Korean version of Mega Man X3. So, um, I can't remember if it's NTSC, Japanese, or PAL format. It's one of, oh, what's it say? Obviously, it's one of those three. Um, just one I picked up in my travels. I can't even remember where I got it. Next on the list is Zero, the Kamikaze Squirrel. Um, what's interesting about this one is it's a PAL version, um, but it's actually in an NTSC box and they literally just stuck a label on the back saying who it was just distributed by and the rating symbol. So I don't believe you can get a proper PAL box for this game. Um, it's a pretty cool game. Um, one of those mascot ones, but one of the better ones, I guess, back in the day. Alright. Ninja Warriors, the new generation. Um, they actually made a remake of this recently, or a sequel, on the Switch, I think. I 
can't remember. Um, it's a pretty cool sort of, uh, I suppose it's a brawler of some sort. Um, it's pretty hard to find these days. So, I don't actually remember playing it back in the day. I got it in a bulk lot a while ago. Yeah, what should I get next? Uh, good old Kirby Fun Pack. Another late release game. Um, it's basically got a whole bunch of different mini games and things. Um, it's actually a lot to do with it. Not just like, you know, two second mini games, but there's one where you have to go into mines and there's a whole adventure there. So, it's quite a neat little, neat little game. Now, so many that you got. There we go. TMNT, Turtles in Time. One of the classic multiplayer, uh, what would you call it? It's all a brawler. I don't know what the name of it is. Anyway, you probably all know what this is. Um, really good conversion. Well, it's not actually a conversion, it's an original one. I can't remember. Anyway, great game. If you've got it, be thankful. Next on the list, Secret of Mana, or Mana, I suppose the accent dictates. Um, most people have heard this one too. Um, they made a remake of, I think, the PS4, which wasn't very good, and they've also got the Secret of Mana collection. Are they coming out, or have already come out, depending on when this is going up. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those games that needs no introduction. Now, oh yes, Kirby's Ghost Trap. So this is just a reskin of Pio Pio, I think it's how it's pronounced. Um, you've got a match like the blobs and you combine them and they drop down and do combinations and things like that. Um, it's a pretty good thing. I mean, it's just, it's a reskin of a, or an existing game, so it is what it is. Aha, Terra Enigma. This one only came out in PAL territory, so Australia, I think, got the only English version. I think Germany or Europe got like a German or multilingual version. Um, it's a pretty fantastic RPG. I've actually played it several times, but I just couldn't get into it. I'd only got about a quarter, maybe a third through it, and I sort of gave up. So maybe someday. Oh no. Nathan's just dropped one. Oh. Starwing. Or tell you Americans, Star Fox. Um, I believe there was some sort of copyright issue back in the day, which is why it's called Starwing. One of the very first um, ones to use the Super FX chip. Um, I actually remember playing the 64 version, Lilat Wars, um, more than this one, and which was an excellent game, but still revolutionary. My hands digging around, trying to avoid the random Game Boy games in there. Nathan's got a huge tub here. Oh, this is an interesting one. Super BC Kid. Um, so this is Bonk, which started out in the Turbo Graphics, I think. And I can't remember if this is a port or a new game. Um, it's a game that not many people actually know about, to be honest. It's a reasonable platformer, but... I think they're better on the system, to be honest. Alright. We have Mr. Aladdin. Yep, it's Aladdin. And um, what was interesting about this one was there was two versions of the Aladdin game. One on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis and one on the Super Nintendo. They're two completely different games, but this developed, both developed by Capcom. Um, this is probably the lesser version, I'd say, um, as much as I hate to say it. Um, the Sega Genesis Mega Drive version, I think, is much more action oriented and a much more interesting game. Now, here's one that my wife brought me many years ago. It's not very good. It's ah, real I didn't monsters. Didn't buy it for him to play though. <laughs> no. Um, so it's based on the Nickelodeon Ah, Real Monsters cartoon. It's a side scroller. I do remember playing it. I remember getting lost a lot in it because of the levels were maze-like, and you can use the three characters to sort of they have different abilities and things. Yeah, it's passable. Prehistoric man. Um, the actual Game Boy game is actually pretty amazing. The Super Nintendo one, it's a reasonable platformer. There's really not much else to say about it. It's just another one that just came and went. Now, one of my personal favourites, Super Adventure Island 2. The first Super Adventure Island was, I think, a launch title and wasn't that great. This is excellent. It's a... It's like a Metroidvania sort of game. You get different upgrades, you can come back to different areas and things like that. Um, quite hard to find these days on the Super Nintendo. Here we have, I don't, I can't remember this one. I, you might have heard it before, Super Super Mario World. I, 
I don't I don't really understand where it came from. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear me laughing back here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, this is one of the first games I played on Super Nintendo. Um, it's pretty excellent and I have beaten it many, many times, including all all 96 exits. Although I do recall there might be more or less. I can't remember if there, if there was secret ones. Anyway, great game. Next. Oh my. Oh There's my so God. many more still to go. Oh. <laughs> Just in tough number one. Okay. Super Probotector's Alien Rebels. That's a mouthful. Um, I do believe this is Contra. Um, it's just been renamed. I think you play as robots instead of people. I think it's censorship laws or something weird like that. Apart from that, it plays pretty similar. It's a pretty great game. A bit difficult, but hey, what's a bit of difficulty in life? All right, next. Mega Man X2. Um, this is one of the few NTSC games in my collection. Um, because the PAL version, a complete copy, goes for way too much money than it's worth. Uh, into the five, six, seven, eight hundred. This was only about a hundred, I think I paid. Um, yeah, the Mega Man game is my, one of my favorite series. Um, I have them all on the Game Boy, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, yada yada yada. I'm sure you've all heard of it before. Yeah, there's so many good games in here. Don't oh, worry, you'll get them all. <clears throat> Super Pang. Um, is this called Buster Brothers in the US? I can't remember. Um, you have to pop bubbles. Um, I remember playing, there, there was tons of PC versions back in the day, like the early 2000s, that were sort of were copies of it. Great game. Um, was it two players? I can't remember. Anyway, would recommend. Now, if Laura's not concentrating, it's because she's watching Survivor in the background, and it's, what is it, Tribal? I'm concentrating? Yeah. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't have anything to add, so I don't have to say anything. Bomberman 3. Um, so there's actually quite a few Bomberman games on the Super Nintendo. I think we got three, and Japan got the rest of them. Um, it's Bomberman. It's the third one. I think it adds quite a few different features. It, it supports the Super Tap. You know, Bomberman. Um, this is one of my... Um, very, I'm very glad to have this. So, this is a puzzle bobble, a buster move. Um, so it's based off the arcade game. Um, what's really quite rare about this copy is that it's, I think it's the Scandinavian version. So it's actually in English, both the manual and the box. Most versions you'll find are like in German or French or whatever the preferred language is. So very hard to find. And one that took me a while to get complete Ren and Stimpy's, ooh, Time Warp. So this is like another beat em up. Uh, now there was a problem with this game, I believe. It was either first or second level, you couldn't get enough items, you couldn't do an, you couldn't do something, and you couldn't actually pass the level, it was actually impossible to, without using a password. So I never actually got past the first stage, but I still really enjoyed it. All right. Oh, his greatest adventure, adventures, adventures, Indiana Jones. JVC release. It's a combination of all three of the classic movies, not including the average Crystal Skull. Um, really good platforming action. Really, really hard. I don't know, because last time I played it was when I rented it from Blockbuster in like, you know, 95, 96, when I was only like, you know, six or seven. But still, I remember it being really difficult. All right. Tetris and Dr. X Mario. Yep, it's Dr. Mario. It's Tetris. It's Tetris and Dr. Mario. Um, I remember playing the combo cart. It's pretty cool. There's different... I mean, I'm, I've been playing the Dr. Mario on the phone lately, which I've been really enjoying. Not much else to say on it. What have I got here? Oh, I remember this one. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. I remember getting this for my birthday when it came out. It was awesome then. It's still awesome now. And definitely the best of the three Donkey Kong Countries on the Super Nintendo. By far. Got to reach into my goodies. Goodies. Hey, look. There's Prehistoric Man for the Game Boy. Weird. We're just talking about that. Here we have Mega Man X3. The proper PAL version. Um, I don't have this one in box. It was way too expensive to buy in box. Um, so I've got a card only. And for some reason, I've got a, a Super Adaptive Super Key. It's a, actually a really good um, converter to play out of region games because it supports a Super FX chip, which is a rarity for these. So... Yep, Mega Man X3, fantastic game, almost impossible to find on Super Nintendo, at least the PAL version, so I'm glad I have it. We're coming near the end, somewhat. Not really. 
But Breath this is the end of like tub number one of this. Oh, I forgot <laughs> there's more than one tub. Breath of Fire 2. Um, it's an RPG on the Super Nintendo. It's fantastic. The translation's not very great, but gee, you get a lot of, of you get a lot of gameplay for your money, and the actual story is pretty good if you can get past the interesting translation parts of it. So, um, I think I'm missing the map out of this, and it irritates me to no end, though. All right, aha! I'm gonna pick me a good game. Booger Man, a pick and flick adventure. Another one I remember renting from the video store and playing a lot. Um, it was also quite difficult, so I only got about halfway through the game. Um, it's actually pretty nicely animated, and I think it gets a lot of flack, but I really enjoyed this one. Uh, maybe it's just my immature humour. Uh -huh. Now this game, funnily enough, the Flintstones, based on the movie, because there is... There's the Treasure of Sierra Mad Rock, I think, and this one... Possibly a third one. I can't remember. It's based on the actual movie. Uh, now, what's interesting about this one is it's got one of the best soundtracks on the Super Nintendo, which you wouldn't think, but um, it's done by someone really famous. And I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, it's great if you want to listen to some good good tunes. All right, next, another personal favourite of mine, The Fireman. So, how would you put this? It's an isometric sort of adventure explore game, I guess. It's hard to explain. Basically, you're in a burning building, and I think you have to get to the top while rescuing people and fighting fires. Some of them being boss fires that move in different patterns. It's quite a short game, but it's, it's really fun. Um, it's just a pity it's a bit hard to find these days. I think it only came out in PAL format, so you might have some trouble finding that one. Laura's getting inundated with games over there. Uh, type 3. A much needed improvement over the original R-Type on the Super Nintendo. It basically adds a lot more of everything and there's a lot less slowdown. Which is one of the common complaints of the first one. Alright, next one. Ooh, Brain Lord. It's an Enix RPG. I couldn't tell you much about it. It came in a bulk lot of other games I brought many years ago, and I haven't played it. I've heard reasonable things about it. Maybe I'll get to it at one stage. Uh -huh. Parodius, I think it's pronounced. Parodius. It's one of those um, shumps, or shoot 'em ups um, except it's a parody of pretty much all of the current shoot 'em ups back in the day. Um, it's a pretty cool one, and it's not too difficult compared to some others in the genre, so it's recommended. Alrighty. Mystic Quest Legends. Um, people give this a lot of flack too, saying it's really easy and it's really basic and this and that. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was back in the day when I was a bit younger, but it flowed nicely. It was, it, it, it was enjoyable all the way through. Um, there was no real slow bits, so I'd give that a try and maybe ignore some of the other comments. Here we have Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World 2. Um, I've actually got the Super Nintendo Special Edition console, so like the Yoshi's Island box um, that, that this came in. So it was one of my first consoles I bought, or well, it was bought for me that my dad didn't just have. Um, excellent game, don't like the crying. It's also really, really hard, uh, especially if you want to get the um, all the coins and stars and flowers and things like that, so. Yes. Aha. Earthworm Jim 2. Um, Earthworm Jim, apparently, um, he's coming to the Evercade console, or at least his games. If you haven't heard of Earthworm Jim, fantastic games, really, really hard. And there was either the first or second one, a one where you had to fly a balloon to the end to blow up a dam, and I could never get past it, so that sucked. But there you go. Castlevania Vampire's Kiss. Um, this is basically... What are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing at all. This is um, Dracula X, I think, in the US. Um, so basically, everyone think, a lot of people think this is a bit of a step back from Castlevania 4. Um, visually, it's really nice, um, but it's also very basic, just like the original Nintendo game. So, uh, mileage may vary. Very difficult. Also really hard to find, too, a copy of it complete. Oh yes, The Lord of the Rings. Oh, sorry, I had to show, I had to show you close up, shh. <laughs> um, this game sucks. 
Um, it's really bad. It's slow. It's cumbersome. It's it's pretty horrible. The only reason I've sort of still got it is because the wife is a really big Tolkien fan. So that's sort of why it's sort of stuck around. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't know if there's old versions that are better, but hey. Oh yeah, Toy Story. Would you believe I've actually got the official game guide to this game somewhere on my cupboard? Which is just bizarre because it's a platformer. Um, I remember it having really, really nice pre-rendered visuals. I think almost better than Donkey Kong Country. Um, it was pretty hard too. There were some particularly nasty stages. So I didn't actually get that far in it, which is surprising for what you'd think is a kid's game. All right, down to the last one, two, three, four, five. The classic Super Mario All-Stars. Um, what's a bummer about this copy is it's not the Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World, which you can get. Um, still an excellent compilation and probably the last time you'll see Nintendo release something of this. There's so many games in one because they've got, you know, well, I don't actually have the virtual console at the moment, but I'm sure they'll have something in the future which they can make money on. But I remember renting that from the video store all the time. I'm getting tired talking. <sighs> TMNT, uh, Tournament Fighters. This was actually the very last Nintendo game that was released, I believe. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one sort of beating up like Street Fighter. I never played it. Um, I think I got this on the bulk lot. I have nothing else to say. Well, I'm sorry. It's got it's got characters from the Ninja Turtles. Yay! Oh, my favorite. This is my favorite of all. What what game is it, Laura? Mario is missing. Oh boy, Mario is missing. Also, there may have been some sarcasm from Nathan there. Oh, I love <laughs> Mario is missing. I love all the educational Mario games. Um, yeah, it's not a terrible game. Um, I think I played it on PC at some point. It, it's just not fun at all. It is the most boring game I think I've ever played. One of, anyway. Robotech by Inix, before they became Square Inix. Um, it's another RPG. You've got robots and you can make them. I never played it back in the, in, in the day, so I can't comment on quality or anything like that, but I've heard reasonable things about it. And what's this? Speaking of Flintstones, oh yeah. It's the treasure of Sierra, is it Sierra Madrock, I think it's pronounced. Uh, one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Um, got quite hard near the later levels. Um, I only got to like right at the end cave and never beat it. There was just something about it that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm glad I've got a copy because complete ones of these are a little harder to find these days. All right, now we're on to tub two. Whoa. Alrighty, so a continuation of my Super Nintendo collection. As you can see, it's a completely different angle. Ooh. Um, if the lighting seems a bit off, it's because our light, studio light on the left, is just blue and stopped working altogether. So that's that's pretty cool. I like how that's happened. So anyway, let's make this quick because I'm pretty sure this whole video is going to be fairly long as it is. Here we go with Sky Blazer. And now I'm positive I've played and beaten this many, many years ago. I can't remember too much about it. I remember it was pretty easy and actually a pretty fun game. Um, just wish I could remember anything about it. I'm positive I've played it though, but there you go. There's a Sony game for you. And there's a couple of 64 stuff in here, just because of space sort of concerns. That's been re-released. Um, as a, some company's doing a whole re-release of all the Super, uh, Star Wars games, so there you go. Super Castlevania 4. Um, funnily enough, I've never played this. It's one I've always wanted to play, but I never owned. And I recently bought a copy of it, and I just haven't had the time. It's just so much harder these days to get Super Nintendos and things hooked up to more modern TVs. Now this is one of my favourite games, I used to rent at the video store. Um, it's The Great Circus of Mystery, starring Mickey and Minnie. Um, it was one you could change in different costumes, and each costume did something different. Um, yeah, really cool game. I, it was one of my favourites. Now we have the coolest of the cool, Radical Rex. Um, this is developed by Laserbeam, who I believe was an Australian, possibly even Melbourne-based company. Um, it's just another sort of wannabe mascot. Um, he's got a skateboard, he's cool. It's not particularly that great, but one of the more unknown games, I believe. Brandish. Um, I got this in a bulk lot of Super Nintendo games many years ago. Never played it. 
Um, let me know if it's worth giving a go or is there other better things out there, which I imagine the answer is probably yes, but there you go. Super Mayro Kart. Um, I also remember renting this a lot from um, the video store as well. Um, it was, I don't think I ever unlocked the special cup. I think the only way I played it was when I rented it and someone already unlocked it. So there you go. Got a Zelda. Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon, Pokemons, an action replay for the Super Nintendo. So I like to cheat in my games because I am a scumbag cheater. Um, this is the action replay 2, so specifically the Pro. Um, it basically, it was also a, um, allowed you to play different region games. Did it support the FX chip? I don't think it did. Mm, oh, it might. Yeah, it did. So it's got the extra chips on the edge, so it supported games, I think, like Mario Kart and uh, what else did it support? Anything, you know, Stunt Race FX and things. Um, the Pro Action Replay 3 is the one that I think supports the majority of games. This was reasonable compatibility, but uh, I think a lot of the later games caught on to it. Uh, Dr. X Mario 64, Zelda, Banjo-Kazooie, Demon's Crest. Now this is the fantastic game. I think this was on the Super Nintendo Mini. Um, how would you describe it? So, it, in fact, I, I used to own the original Game Boy game, Gargoyle's Quest, I think it was. I've got the Nintendo one, which is Gargoyle's Quest 2, and Demon's Crest, I think, is either a prequel to the Game Boy or a sequel to the second one. Um, it's like a Metroidvania. Um, it's just fantastic. The only thing I really didn't like about it is the, its password based rather than battery backup so uh, it's just a bit, bit of irritation I guess just starting and stopping so Secret of Evermore, um, Secret of Manor's Poorer Cousin, still a great game um, I think there was a lot of um, alchemy and things you had to combine and things like that uh, I remember playing and something happened with my copy of the game I got to, I think one of these bosses here and it locked up it wouldn't I couldn't get past it so that was my experience Space Station Silicon Valley, Top Gear 3000, another relatively uncommon sort of game. Not many people really mention it. So there was Top Gear 1 and 2 um, on the Super Nintendo, which were pretty great. And this one's basically set in space. Ooh. Um, that's, yeah, that, that's it. It's Top Gear in space. Um, Adam's Family, uh, this is a Pugsley uh, scavenger hunt. Pretty good platform, pretty tough from what I remember. And I remember he's, the character controls like he's like got soap on his feet. So uh, very floaty, but uh, you know, for a licensed based game, I think you do a lot worse. What have I got in here? Oh, the classic Super International Cricket. Now if only it would focus, there we go. Um, it's Cricket on the Super Nintendo. It's Super International Cricket. I think there was a bug where if you kept on appealing to the umpire, it would eventually give him out. Or it could just be, you know, my mind playing tricks on me from ye old years ago. Uh, what have I got here? Donkey Kong Country 3. Great game. Um, the second one is still the best one. This one is... Well, probably my least favourite. It goes Donkey Kong Country 2, 1 and then 3 in terms of um, my enjoyment. Still a great game, but... It didn't quite have the quite in same impact as number two did. Uh, what else? Uh, why do we even have that in there? Uh, Earthworm Jim, uh, the classic, 24 megs of play action. I think this is the one we, is this the one we had that stupid balloon? It was like an isometric one and you had to like guide a balloon to like blockades. Or was that the second one? Either way, I could never get past it. It was awful. Great game, um, really tough though, surprisingly. Oh yes, the Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, just like the Circus Mystery. Um, they're very similar um, games. I don't think you get, you don't get costumes in this one, but I believe everything else is fairly similar. Capcom got made a lot of good um, Mickey Mouse games on Super Nintendo. Oh yes, Kirby's Dream Course, the classic. It's like golf, and Kirby's the ball because he's round. So, you know, why not make it a golf game? Um, there's a lot of bugs in this game. I always played two players with my friends, and I'd get into the hole and he'd get knocked out when we weren't near each other, and all sorts of interesting things happened. Hmm. 
Oh yes, Bubsy. The game that everyone loved, but now everyone loves to hate. Um, I remember playing them on yeah, Amazing, the game show here in Australia. Uh, I mean, back... It just wasn't a good game. I don't understand why it got so popular, but... Yeah, they made several of them, which is unfortunate. And a, a new game, I think, just came out too. Warriors Woods, great puzzle game. I own the um, the Nintendo copy too. I think the Nintendo one was one of the last released original Nintendo games for the console. Um, it plays like Pio Pio or something, but if you could actually move the blocks individually, um, I think you've got to line up the bombs with different coloured, um, I don't know what they call them, creatures and blow them up. And there's also a puzzle mode and things like that. So very nice. Oh yes, The Lion King. Um, what, the second or third level, there's that auto run level, you're on the ostrich, which is ridiculously tough, I didn't really get much further past that because I need to harden up, but still a pretty solid game if you can get past that bit. The Lost Vikings 2, um, was also ported to the PlayStation 1, uh, I believe the PlayStation 1 got weird updated graphics, like CGI based, real, like, rendered ones. Um, it's pretty much like the first game. I think there's a couple of extra characters and a couple of different abilities, but it's still pretty solid, but I still prefer the first one. What have I got left? Chuck Rock. Um, a surprisingly pleasant platformer. Um, he basically chucks rocks to make platforms and he attacks with his belly and it had some pretty good, um, music. Um, it was just, it's not fantastic, it's not the worst, but it's just a fun one to kill maybe an hour or two and then, you know, you're done with it. So, yeah. Of course, the Super Game Boy. Play ye old Game Boy cartridges on ye old Super Nintendo. Um, I don't really remember playing any of my Game Boy games on Super Nintendo. I'm pretty sure I owned it, but I think I usually use the, um, the, the Pokemon Stadium transfer pack to play Pokemon on the 64 rather than the Super Nintendo Game Boy sort of combo, so... Uh, what have I got left? I'm glad that's in there. That's pretty relevant. Uh, another relevant one. Uh -huh. Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs. Um, this was something of a not a remake, but maybe reimaging of the first Battle Toads on the original Nintendo. Um, friggin' hard. I mean, you've got the um, the Turbo Tunnel, which is just a nightmare. Um, it's a pity because the first stage is excellent. It's one of those sort of beat 'em ups like Double Dragon, but. You know, maybe I'm just not good enough. And I think this was one of the last Super Nintendo games released for the system, Tamuna Pumba's Jungle Games. I got this for the wife because she owned the PC version and she really wanted to play it. I'm like, I can get the PC version working, but the Super Nintendo version is just easier to get a hold of and just whack in. You know, it's basically a mini game collection, pinball, sling shooter, hippo hop and burpa. Um, I believe the pinball was the most excellent one the wife was saying. Super Punch-Out, um, another classic, a sequel to the original Punch-Out, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on the Nintendo. They had really big character sort of spri sprites, yeah. Um, really, you know, had a lot of expression. It's pretty much the same thing as the original Nintendo, so if you like that one, you'll, like th you'll love that one. Now this is Lufia, which I think is what, Lufia 2, Rise of Sinistrals or something in the US. Um, I think this only came out in Australia in PAL format. I can't remember. Um, it's okay. Uh, I think there's quite a few bugs and translation errors, but, you know, no one cared back then, did they? Mega Man X, the first of the X games. Fantastic game. Um, X1, uh, 3 and 4 were my favourites personally, um, but, you know, they're all great games. So, yeah, what a fantastic first show on Super Nintendo for the Blue Bomber. Donkey Kong Country, another classic. You know, if you haven't played it, then where have ye been? Um, it's Donkey Kong. He's on the Super Nintendo. The hardest part was getting all the bonus rooms and things, because it does track uh, on the level select screen if you've gotten all the bonuses in each level, which I thought was interesting. Um, Illusion of Time, I think this was an action RPG if I recall, I have played it before many many years ago, it's not the worst, it's not the best, yeah. I honestly can't remember much about it, um, 
I want to say it goes under a different, is it Illusion of Gaia? Or is that the sequel or the same one over the US? Let me know. And finally, a non-relevant game. Oh, Blast Corps. Um, so yeah, that's all my Super Nintendo games, at least I can find. It's possible there's a couple floating around um, in different tubs and all that, because I am a terrible hoarder. Um, but yeah, let us know uh, what are your favourite Super Nintendo games, or anything about Super Nintendo. Just interesting facts, or anything like that, I would be very interested to know. And if you like this video, then, you know, we've got more every Sunday. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.